I took out a Builder Basic plastic medicine cabinet like this. And today I'm gonna to show you how I replaced it with this custom wood and tile build out. When I took out the basic plastic cabinet, I was left with a framed out hole in the wall. Instead of making a completely wooden cabinet to fill this cavity, I decided to use this clean white penny tile. I started by pulling off any loose sheetrock pieces to make sure I had a flat back wall surface to work on. These small tiles come in square sheets held together with a mesh back. I first pinned up a whole sheet to help me get an idea of how much space was left around it. And then I cut out sections from additional sheets to fill in the sides, which was super easy to cut with just a pair of scissors. I used a small level held at the top of the full sheet of tile and drew a level horizontal line. This will help me place the tile straight. To adhere the tile, I'm using a pre-mixed, ready-to-use tile adhesive and a 3 16th V-notch trowel. This small trowel is what is recommended for these tiny tiles. With the flat side of the trowel, I applied a layer of the adhesive to the wall, and then I came back with the notch side and troweled in the grooves. I also kept my adhesive just under the level line so I could still see it for reference. And then I set the two bottom pieces of tile in place. With the bottom done and level, I could then repeat the process for the top pieces. When all of the pieces were in place, I took a rubber grout float and gently pushed on the tiles to make sure there were no lumps and everything was flush. And then I left that to dry. I'm gonna be building my frame out of three quarter inch solid white oak. To start the wooden frame, I took my board and cut it down to four inches wide. Then I cut four smaller pieces from that one board on my miter saw. You could also use a circular saw. I wanted my frame to be thinner than the 3 quarter inches, so to change the thickness, I utilized a technique called resawing. This allows you to get thinner boards out of one thicker piece of wood. My boards are 4 inches in height, so I raised my blade height to be just past 2 inches and I set my fence to the width I wanted. And then I very carefully and slowly pushed the wood through, utilizing two push sticks. After the first cut, I then flipped the wood end for end, making sure the wood's face stays against the fence so that the cuts line up directly above and below each other. You can now see that I'm left with several thinner boards that I'll now make my frame and shelves out of. I set my boards in place and I marked on my side pieces where I'll want my shelves to be. These lines are where I'm going to cut grooves, called dados, where the shelves are going to slide in. To cut the dados, I'm gonna use my circular saw, and here you can see me adjusting the depth of my cut and then locking it into place. To make the cuts, I used a straight edge and established the outside lines, and then multiple passes to remove the meat in the middle. And here you can see the dados I'm going for. After testing the shelves in my dados, they were slightly tight, so I widened them just a bit with another pass, and then they fit perfect. I then held the two sides together and used the existing dados to exactly transfer the lines to the opposite side support. And then I repeated the circular saw passes for the second side. And then I cleaned up the dados with a small, sharp chisel. Before putting it all together, I gave all of my pieces a good sanding. To put the frame together, I'm just gonna be using wood glue and clamps because the boards are too thin to accept nails or screws. It's probably overkill in hindsight, but to combat the glue squeeze out, I decided to add painter's tape at the borders of the glued corners to make the squeeze out cleanup even easier. I then added the glue to the joining corner pieces of the box and clamped it up to dry. Oh, and the dark places that you see on the outside there, those are blade burn marks from the resawing. I never sanded them out because these faces are gonna be hidden in the wall. With the frame glued up and dry, I moved on to inserting the shelves. I did a quick dry fit to double check that my shelves fit, and once I confirmed that they did, I laid down some glue in the grooves and slid the shelves in. To add trim to the frame, I took another white oak board and I cut some half inch strips on my table saw and miter saw. And again, if you don't have these saws, you could also do this with a circular saw. Then, after some sanding, I got four scrap boards and I cut them to the exact outer height of my wooden frame. These boards are going to act as supports as I glue on the small trim pieces. Yeah. 
After the glue dried, the last step for the frame was to add some finish. I like to use a water-based finish on light woods because it dries clear and it doesn't cause the wood to yellow at all. Back at the tile, the last step of the build was to add grout. I mixed up a small amount of white grout until it resembled a smooth cake batter. And then, with a rubber float, I worked the grout into the seams between the tiles, holding my float at a 45 degree angle. I let it sit for a few minutes, and then I came back with a clean wet sponge and I wiped away the excess, being real careful not to wipe the grout out of the joints. And after the grout dried, the last step was the install. I used construction adhesives specifically for wood and I applied it to the two by fours in the wall on all sides. I then slid the frame into the cavity and I shot a few small pin nails in the sides to secure it while the adhesive dried. And with that, my medicine cabinet renovation was done. So thanks a ton for watching and I hope you learned something from this video. If you're not already subscribed, you can do that down below and make sure you're following me on Instagram. That's where you're gonna see what I'm up to and what I'm working on next. Thanks again and I'll see you on the next project.